be said about Diamond. The last few times where he got to play this in Italy. So two comfort picks, first of all. No mid lane banch yet. Normally we see a lot of mid laners being banned against Forbidden. But in this case here, there might be a lot of things open suddenly. And then Zerif, we know he loves to play it. He even first picks Zerif if it's open because he's just that confident in his ability to play it. Well, not taken off the table from Cabo Shard. We've seen Huni run it once before and it left a lot to be desired. He performs a lot better on those aggressive champions, but Lissandra still up. Rengar now taken off the table. This is, of course, the first rematch here in the Spring Split, Deficio. Fnatic have already beaten Gambit once, and it was using a Rumble Olaf composition with Zed to round that out a little while ago. Zed's still available if Fnatic want to go that route. Yeah, and that, of course, was before Gambit got into their winning streak here on four games in a row. So there's definitely a big improvement for them and a big difference in the team. We see Coach Leviathan as well, just behind Kabushad here. He's really come into this team at from week two, honestly, and just made sure everyone knew what to do in the game. No Zero first pick, instead Zed. Same as yesterday for Febriven against SK Gaming. Yeah, but it was comboed with that rumble. And as we saw in that highlight clip just a moment ago, there were some early kills, early teleports from Fnatic's members that helped them get the lead against SK and yeah. allow them to snowball that game. And we, again, we really saw how Fnatic, it's all about the team play, 5-1-5 five five together. You sacrifice your lane if it means you can get a kill for your teammate. And they play around it so well. Only problem they did have was like closing out the game a little bit because they didn't split push at first. Trying to go as five and then SK managed to stall. But uh, let's see what they do today. Yeah, you do see Gambit with a very smart lock in that Morgana. Cabo Shards used it in the top lane to great success. And yesterday, Rainover had a brilliant game on Rek'Sai. You can also swap that Morgana to support if they want to go that route. Or even so mid lane, yeah. Play. It's a triple flex pick and go to so many different lanes for Gambit. But yeah, Kapushad has really been the guy to play it in the top lane. Two different builds, cooldown reduction, utility to help his team, or full nuke AP-focused Morgana as well from him. And I actually like this Rek'Sai because what we saw yesterday, when people pick Jarvan, you can take Rexai and actually outdoor him early on, and then you can apply a lot of pressure on the map. That's what Rainover did against SK. Now Gambit makes sure, despite the Nidalee being banned, they still have a great early game jungler for Diamond who can really make some plays and one-on-one -on -one Rainover if he finds him. So we'll see what they decide to do. It is a Maokai and Graves locked in. Steel back, not gonna get his traditional core key despite it being up and available. And Huni gonna be playing that tank I prefer him on the Mage Champions. I think he performs a little better. The damage dealers, we'll see how he performs on this front line. Yeah, again, and also, sorry, notice what Fnatic... It's already shown double physical carries and a tank top laner. Meaning going into late game for Gambit, if they do have a tank top, and if it goes to like a Morgana support, you can stack a lot of armor there, and it becomes very hard for Fnatic to take you down. But later we get into the game itself. If it's going to be Morgana top lane, it won't really matter too much for Fnatic because nobody will be fully stacking that armor. So we'll find out what Gambit decides to do. Betsy going to be playing his traditional assassin in the middle lane. And Pinoy once again on Callista. Yeah, we've seen this before here. When Gambit takes Morgana early, they go for Callista later because now you have that black shield to protect her as well. So she can play really aggressive because Pinoy, he goes for that Blade of the Ruin King built into Hurricane. So very attack speed focused, which, which basically means he has to stay in the fight for longer to get the same amount of damage. So he doesn't have that extra AD from like a BF sword. And that's where the black shield really comes in and helps him play really, really aggressive in these fights. Two games played for Pinoy on that Callista. He's gone 7, 5 and 12. Not the greatest of stats. Tends to have a strong laning phase, but the one thing I'm concerned about, if he doesn't get to a QSS relatively soon, could get popped quickly, fairly immobile, once Zed jumps at him. Maokai can lock him down as well. And Pinoy's opted into this. Yeah, we'll need to see how exactly. his positioning plays out. And also with the likes of Anya and Leona open for Yellow Star, so for Fnatic side, if Maokai engages on to this Kalista, you would just follow up with the stun from a support, and he's gonna die, and he cannot waste the QSS because of the Z ulti either. But it won't be any Annie or Leona for Yellow Star. So instead, just relying on that Maokai, which normally is a fantastic pick against the likes of Kalista, because if you can lock her down, she is, of course, very squishy as an AD carry. Then you can get a kill. But that's where the Black Shield from Kapushad is gonna make wonders for Gambit. Well, Fnatic have got a similar play style to what they've done previously against Gambit with that Olaf in the jungle again. Rainov is returning to the only European jungle that's found success, but that is purely AD focused. A yeah. lot of importance on this early game for Fnatic. Very AD focused. And also Fnatic again, a bit like yesterday, not running any hard engage 
because Maokai is fairly short range on his W, so for him he's gonna have Flash ready if he wants to like really dive onto the back line of Gambit to start a fight. Olaf of course is gonna ghost him with the axes here, so you're not really looking for this, oh we catch you out of position and boom you're just gonna die instantly. Instead, it's just very very bruiser heavy. Olaf, Graves of course one of the most tanky AD carries we do have. And then the Z, so skirmish, bruiser focused from Fnatic, but also strong 5 on 5 itself. And of course for Gambit's side here, very very squishy composition coming in. Well, we are going to see that cannon to round out Gambit. So, as far as team fighting goes, they've got a lot of utility, a lot of mobility as well. All of the champions can move quite efficiently without their Morgana, but that's quite inventive for Gambit. It's what we often see from Gambit, actually. They run very squishy comps, but with a lot of mobility and a lot of focus on being able to one-on-one -on -one people left and right, and a lot of pick potential. So when you look like here at the Ari coming in with the Rek side together, that's a very strong 2 and 2 skirmish from Gambit's side, where they can play aggressively around that mid lane if they want to with Betsy. But again, they always have that problem. If you get caught out and you are this squishy, you will get popped instantly and suddenly you are at a disadvantage going into the fight. Where someone from Fnatic's side, because Zed, of course, can dash around with the shadows. You have the Maokai, we have the Olaf, who you don't really want to catch up because they're going to be so tanky yeah. already. So a little bit more room for error for them. But for Gambit's side, they have just a lot of damage coming in here and they can really blow up some targets if they get in a straight for team fight. Yeah, Gambit are going to be looking for those engages to happen. I definitely want to see how these lanes play out. Yesterday, Gambit showed a great 2v2 lane, yeah. and Diamond's synergy with Cabochard yesterday was fantastic with that Nidalee plus Renekton. You're about to see those team comps on your screen. Remember, Fnatic are 1-0 up against Gambit. And Gambit, however, they're on a four-game winning streak. Hit us up on Twitter. Hashtag FMC win, hashtag GMB win. There's the flags, the banners, the logos. As we load onto the ref, that is Fnatic versus Gambit. You can hear how excited this crowd is. And to Fischio, I'm looking forward to this, this impressive looking Gambit to see how well they can play today against yeah. one of the league's top teams. They've done a fantastic job beating teams who you would sometimes consider worse, except maybe the Elements game where Gambit just had a fantastic comeback. And they've actually just, again, looking they look great, and they look better for every week they play, which is really the highlight for them how they've turned around this season. And now against Fnatic, who's probably sitting... Uh, will we consider them the best team? No, SK is still, I mean, dead even. We can say after what Second we saw best. yesterday. I think we'd say SK and Fnatic are very, very even. But yeah, definitely the top two teams in the EUL says if Gambit can beat Fnatic here, they're really showing this winning streak is for real. Well, that's definitely the case. Gambit have been steadily improving. You heard that clip from Diamond earlier in the day, and he said, after the losing streak, we've got some wins on the board. Now we want to set ourselves up for the winning streak. A huge winning streak. Hashtag 13-5 the dream, according to some <laughs> Gambit fans on Reddit. And we see the same here for Eddie. He did, uh, as he did yesterday on Annie, he started boots, now doing the same on Morgana. If he's in a lane swap, it's great, because it allows him to roam around. Obviously, he's going to get less gold, but... If he gets in that two and two lane, suddenly you don't have that extra combat stat, and that's where the boots doesn't really pay off for you. So I want to see how he plays with it. Yeah, talking about his opposite number, Yellow Star's Thresh yesterday was particularly good. He landed some clutch death sentences around the towers, but it was really Rainover's Rek'Sai that was the main initiating tool. So I need to see how impactful Yellow Star is going to be when Pinoy can hop, Betsy can dash, Diamond can tunnel. There's a lot of mobility, yeah. and you've got the black shield if anyone's at risk. And that's the caught. thing here. Both comms not really having a clear way to start team fights, because again, the black shield is going to block the Maokai from just jumping onto one target and locking them down. And meanwhile, for Gambit's side, you're going to rely on maybe landing a charm, a flash coming in from Diamond to knock up a target, then follow up with the cannon ulti to stun someone. That's how maybe you started. Or you need to land the one binding or the hook from the two supports. So no real clear way for both teams to start it. So it's going to be a lot about objectives and vision control now. And then you get a good fight. And they're invading well, straight in this blue buff. Nuni and Rainova with 75% of the public vote in their favor are going to go for an early invade. The lane swap plays into their favor because of the duo of Fnatic being down. However, blue will at least slow the process a little. This is very, very smart though, and a bit of a greedy play from Diamond himself. If you don't start on the same side where you do all enemies, you risk this happening where Fnatic can then take their own buff and rush straight toward the blue. Unless you start the blue itself, which Diamond didn't do, he was actually doing walls first. That's again why he now lose it. And I don't think he can get to their blue in time because now we have the recall from Raynova. He's gonna run there with Smite ready. So it's gonna be three buffs from or four Fnatic. Let's see Diamond, he's trying. Eddie's here as well, but notice how Yellowstar 
and Huni, they follow Rain over. Let's see if Febivan decides to spin around. Yesterday, Fnatic got some early kills in the jungle, and it was Febivan Zed that was leading the way. We do some members oh, they're coming Gambit. in. The Dark Binding's gonna connect on Huni. Look for those smites. Diamond's still trying to get the buff. It's Diamond that's caught up. The flash, the death sentence. Diamond gets blue buff, but he's going to give up first blood to Rainover. I don't think that was worth it. And Rainover does eventually get his third buff as well. Yeah, just really well played early game from Fnatic. Seeing the lane swap and then just going straight for that blue buff here, it obviously gives them two options. Either you can go and dive the cannon if Let's say Gambit has started on the top side with Diamond here. Then suddenly you just had a free blue buff, and then you could dive Kevin Cannon after. But as soon as they spotted him there, it was fairly easy for them to do three, four buffs even with the kill onto Diamond. They're going to get everything early on. So something that we have been saying since the changes the 2015 season is that three buffs isn't the end of the world. Rainover actually gets exhausted. Eddie is going to go in, tries to get the lockdown. Here comes Pinoy to help out. That's going to be a double, double buff, buff given him, to yeah. Pinoy. That is a massive turnaround. They're turning onto Yellow Star. He gets caught up by Diamond. All of a sudden, it's Fnatic that are the greedy ones. Gambit reply. Double buffs on Pinoy and a kill to Diamond. That is a huge swing in favor of Gambit. Yeah, it looked so good for Fnatic beforehand. Almost, well, actually got the four buffs, but then caught behind enemy lines and Gambit collapsing on them. Getting double for the AD carry. No freeze up here, so Huni has been able to get some XP. Level three for himself. Actually goes for Kabushad as well. So both the top laners getting some decent farm, but Kabushad is ahead because he's actually been left on his own all the time. And now Pinai, he's looking for some Look how many here. spears there are. He's got rend, he's got red buff. Huni is scared, does need to flash away. Pinoy unable to actually proc that, but that's going to be a difficult lane if Huni wants yeah. to stick around. This is really massive for Gambit because, again, Kabushad, he's just been sitting in that bot lane. After Fnatic took the blue buff, they didn't go and try and kill him. Instead, they went back to their own blue buff, so tried to deny Diamond some farm, and therefore left this cannon on his own. He's a squishy target. He would be easy to dive normally. N not anymore. He's already level 4 or 5, and 26 CS to 11 from Huni. Well, I want to echo what Tabs was saying in our pregame how if Gambit can get off to a strong lane, if they can get off to a good early game, it can help them contain Fnatic's roams, contain Fnatic's movement around the map. They've got Pinoy with double buffs up top. They've got Cabochard with a CS and a level advantage. And yes, we haven't seen much of Betsy yet, but he's staying relevant and he's going to have support soon. Let's see what happens to Cabochard. He's flayed backwards. He's going to be able to just rush away. This is a very, very good start for Gambit. Yeah, for sure. Especially because Diamond managed to get some revenge on Raynova and Fnatic for taking all his buffs. Got to kill himself as well, and an assist. So he's actually looking fine. XP is not a problem. Remember, it's the camps that really matter, not the buffs itself. Febivan jumping on Betsy, small level advantage for him. Yeah, Febivan hitting that ultimate mark. Betsy will get it. Goes down. aggressive instantly and actually burns the exhaust. Just the threat of death mark was enough for Betsy to use that summoner spell. So, Febivan got a small advantage in the mid lane. He needs to make it capitalize. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yellow Star uh. stealing the crab from Diamond. As we catch another glimpse, Betsy now going in. Deathmark used to dodge the charm and going to get out safely. Betsy continues to engage. Fairly smart play from Febivan. Yeah, Betsy actually tried to bait him into a bad fight here because Diamond was coming from the river. But due to Fnatic spotting him as Yellow Star was stealing away that juicy, juicy goal. For himself, Febivan just ulted and then backed away for himself. I'm not sure if he actually dodged the charm with his ulti or not. I think he did. Probably did, yeah. So just Betsy trying to set up a little bait. Didn't work for him instead. Just some more farm. And often again what you see is if Ari falls behind in the lane to Zed, she goes for arm guard. That's one of her first items, like Codex, Codex into arm guard and then a fairly early hourglass. So she at least can stay even in the lane and not get all in by the Zed. Well, we'll see how this works out for them. Gambit. Gonna start stabilizing these laning phases. We do see Huni moving up to that top lane to try to deal with Pinoy as best he can. 30 CS to 44, still down, but definitely not out of it. Does have his teleport available. And we do see and Cabochard continuing to accelerate. You touched on the item builds that we could see. Maybe you're going for that arm guard. There we go. For both mid and top lane, actually, for Gambit. Keep in mind, Fnatic is. Close to only physical damage. Yes, there's the Maokai and some true damage on the Olaf. 
But the two main carries is going to be physical damage. So getting early outlasts from Gambit is going to mean they can actually take some good fights in the mid game. Kennen as well, some of the recent buffs he's gotten has become stronger and stronger in terms of the mid game itself, especially with his ulti. And the fact he can actually max his W now after the change, so it does damage to everyone in Kennen's ulti, which is really, really strong. So we'll expand on that in a moment. This is 5.3. Fnatic signaling their intent to control Diamond. Another jungle invade. The entirety of this opening match, Fnatic have put emphasis on Diamond's buffs. It cost them at red, but that's another steal for them. And it was, of course, Diamond doing so well the last few games for Gambit, already, always setting up kills for his soul laners. Now he's really been denied quite a bit. Again, not in terms of XP too much, more just the fact he never gets, he never gets to have a buff or give it over to Betsy either. And we just see Fnatic with a bit of a power play. You have the teleport in the top lane and four guys on the bottom side, so you will always be in a numbers advantage when you go for that buff. That's definitely the case. And as we were mentioning just before that previous buff uh, battle, we are on 5.3. Cannon did have some tweaks to his ultimate, going to hit everybody within the range uh, as opposed to random targets. And very important, like you mentioned, the W damage applied to everybody. Inside the ulti. Inside yeah. so the ulti Basically, range. that means you can max it in the lane itself, so it's ready for the first dragon fight. And that's going to give, be a massive power spike for him compared to the Cannon where he used to max Q beforehand and only have the damage on one target. It was like eating a small binding, not really doing too much. No tower has been taken down in this lane swap, so it's been very different from what we normally see, because again, there's been so much focus on denying buffs from the junglers, and not really diving or stopping any of the top laners from farming, really. Well, we'll see how this works out for them. Kabashad still with a small advantage, 20 CS over Huni. Febivin not going to take the bait against Betsy. Betsy's around 10 or 15 down. Dealing with that early aggression of Febivin. Yeah, and while, okay, they're losing the mid lane from Gambit's side, Pinoy managed to get a lot of farm on Kalista. He dodged the Graves early, which would have been a very tough lane for him. And, of course, Kabush have been winning as well in terms of the top laners. So Gambit actually been winning out on this lane swap with the farm on both Pinoy and Kabush. And let's see Reynov. He's spotted here by a ward. It's already pinged, so as you see, Gambit can now start the Dragon with Reynov being stuck in the top lane. Eddie and Pinoy, the wave is pushing very, very heavily against them. We'll see if they get caught out. Three members of Fnatic top, and as you touched on, Deficio. Information is key. Gambit going to secure an uncontested, safe dragon at absolutely no cost. That is a great ward in the top lane. Yep. A fairly non-traditional ward, but it works out really well. It's about to time out, and Gambit take full advantage. And even better for Gambit, because they were sitting in the middle of the lane, you have to, of course, respect the lantern from a Thresh. So you needed that ward really far back to really see if anyone was coming, and that's why they placed it there. So good, good ward in the top side making sure they stay safe, get them the dragon as well. And I made this comment yesterday about how Gambit, they don't really care about early dragons, unless it's for free. That's basically from Eddie himself, talking about how, yeah, you know what, we want farm, we want kills instead. But if we see someone on the top side and we don't have to buy any pink walls to take a dragon, we will go and get it, like Gambit just did here. So very well played. What we did see was that farm alarm from Diamond used to actually secure his own red buff. We did catch a glimpse of Fnatic members moving into the jungle and clearing out the tunnels. But Gambit able to defend. You know, this is something we have seen from Gambit over the course of their, their winning games, uh, the winning streak rather. Their laning phase in their early game tends to be relatively strong. They've got very high skilled players, but they tend to lose some focus or some shot calling in the mid game. So I want to see how they use this very mobile high damage comp once we start seeing more pressure on towers and once we start seeing roams. Diamond is going to work again on that synergy with Kavashad. It's actually really been a good thing for Gambit with Kapushad and Diamond together. Kapushad is one of the best top laners in terms of pure laning phase. And then of course when Diamond can come down and snowball him, he can really start taking over the games. We've seen it so many times. Notice they can spot him in the bush here. They know Huni's sitting there. So a sapling. They're just gonna go all in. Well, Kabashad's looking forward. That's an instant flash from Huni. He's stunned. He's knocked up. The tree is getting chopped. Kabashad continues to lay down the auto attacks, but it's the Prey Seeker that seeks the honeypot and takes him down. Gambit with another kill. Another kill and just a nice little setup with the lane gank from Diamond, knowing you had enough damage and CC to lock down a Ma Maokai. Actually going for Righteous Glory from the side of a Huni. So no Rod of Ages for him, which means even less magic damage from Fnatic later in the game. Going for that mobility instead to really help out the Olaf pick as well from Rainover. Get in there and get into the back line of, of Gambit. So Fnatic have this team comp that's heavily stacked in dealing physical damage. 
we felt that early game, the laning phase may be quite integral because if their opponents get those hourglasses, get that armor stacked up, it could be very difficult for them to win team fights. So Fnatic got to be very careful with how much they give away to their opponents. And the only good thing for Fnatic is there's no tank on the side of Gambit, except for maybe the Rek'Sai, who will be stacking armor for sure, but that's one target. The backline itself, you don't really get any armor items on the likes of an AD carry. And obviously for the two mages here, yes, you get an hourglass, but that's going to be it. It's going to make it hard for Febren to find a target. But in terms of like pure armor stacking, because there's so many squishy members of Gambit, we're not going to hit those 250, 300 numbers, which you would see with a full tank. So we'll see how Fnatic manages to deal with that. <laughs> Hello, Star. Gets charmed by Betsy. Tremor Sense will reveal Rainover's position. Diamond's going to smite that one away. Again, Fnatic really, really trying to control the blue buff from the, the jungle of Gambit. Yeah, all they're doing here is denying that blue buff from Betsy. Because very important in the Ari and Zed matchup is Ari, once she gets Arm Guard and then a blue buff, she can actually start spamming abilities and she can push the Zed back and suddenly actually catch up and farm from Betsy's side. But he keeps losing that buff here, meaning that Febiven has a fairly easy lane and he can keep his lead. And it's showing 15 CS at this point. We do see Edward's Soul Shackles is available. Gonna set his sights on Steel back. Going to be moving in. Instant teleport from Huni. Is that going to complete? Yes, it is. Oh, Edward. Ulti, oh that is so smart. Pinoy using the Fates Call so that Eddie can keep his flash. Much shorter cooldown. And they get out clean. So, Hourglass is completed. Merc Treads picked up for Diamond on that Farm Alarm. Rainover looking for Cabochard. This could get messy. We do see the Slicing Maelstrom, but you cannot stun a Ragnarok Olaf. Cabochard's going to throw that hour boss down. Going to stay alive. Flashes out. Now Diamond's looking. Prey Seeker goes out. He's used the tunnel already. Diamond not able to flash. Cabochard chasing. Prey Seeker hit the W. One or two more hit techs needed. Not going to secure the kill. Is this going to get them in trouble though? Febivin. More people are coming here. Two mid laners moving down. Cabochard's going to take the tot. 100 HP left, less than actually. Febivin's now chasing in. Knockup is not going to work. Death cap, uh, rather death mark, not even needed. They've thrown that down to Huni, but here comes Betsy now. This has turned into an extremely extended fight. Betsy's on the board. 1-0-1. One, one. Who else is around? No, duo lane's going to help out. And heavens to Betsy, he's going to back away from that fight. But 1-0-1, one, one, got a kill in the Rome. Yeah, two kills actually here for Fnatic in that fight. Kabushan and Diamond ended up going down. Only one kill going over to Febren with the Rome. Back up to this dual lane. Pinoy's really had a good time because the lane's open. Oh, they're going in. Flash, Flay, Deathbox does not connect. And Eddie, thanks to saving the flash earlier, is able to flash Alice towards safety. But successful gank nonetheless. However, Yellow started to use his own stuff. And we just saw that one on one before between Rainover and Kabushat. That's really going to be the big deal for Fnatic when you have this Olaf who can get locked down by all the CC from Gambit. He's going to be a big deal in this game. Febren obviously saving ulti. Diamond is doing his best here to try and save Kabushat by knocking up the Zed first. But as soon as he can actually just dash around him, get the first kill, Betsy comes in trying to clean it up. But from here, because Gambit took so much damage on the tower as well, or well from the one on one beforehand, they end up losing on the trade. They're going to get a top turret. Oh, so close to it. Oh, Blade of the Rune King's on Pinoy. He's chasing. Trying to set something up, they get the Ragnarok down. One thing that we did catch in that replay was uh, the changes to Ari in 5.3. The W, that Foxfire spinning around 30% quicker. So gets more shots off, gets more damage off, but it is a shorter range. So Betsy needs to get in much closer to his enemies. And all that free time from the Roman Febivin, Betsy's now closed out or closed down that CS gap. And talking about the 5.3 changes to Ari, also really highlights why Fnatic put so much focus on the blue buff. Because the W, also the Q from Ari, cost more mana as well. So she really needs the blue buff in this matchup. And it's just been denied from Betsy. But he has now, as you just said here, caught up in farm. Second dragon being started again. Fnatic's dual lane is still in the top side. Eddie had already recalled and would be nearby in case there was a fight. So there's going to be another dragon for Gambit. Two for zero. And once again, they've only invested one pink ward. That's 100 gold on getting two dragons. So Fnatic will answer back by securing the first tower of the game. 500 gold down against their opponents, but in a good position. Gambit now somewhat aggressive. They're caught out in the jungle. Eddie, can he land the Dark Binding? Chilling Smite comes out for Reyno. Reyno's dodged one, he's dodged two, he's dodged three. He can't dodge them all. Does get caught out. Gambit secure a kill. Now Cabochot, they've That's stunned that Febivin. That's two quick kills as the death mark is down, but it's not going to be enough. Gambit have got a minion line pushing up behind them. 
and they may want to commit to the tower. Huni is looking for a chunk of Gambit to take out, but decides against it, and Pinoy is now joining the fight. This is a five versus three, and they're going in for the tower. Again, that was just a really, really good play by Gambit. After the take, the dragon here, they still know that Yellowstar and Steelback were on the top side. Huni actually caught out here. Oh, he's in so much trouble. We do see him going down. Just a second, it's the rend that works. Gambit, they've done it again. They do manage to take a tower in reply. That aggressive move through the jungle was fantastic. They catch Fnatic out and they take a tower. Again, it's just a great power play because they know Yellowstar and Steelback were on the top side of the map so they could move into the jungle, place a few deep wards. They saw Raynova move by saying, okay, we already here with so many members. We have Pinoy running from the top lane as well. We can take a fight, create a few picks, get a mid lane tower as well. Just such a good setup by Gambit knowing where Fnatic were with their players and how to take advantage of it. And now we're going to get another fight for this blue buff. Oh, well, we're going to get Fnatic to take it, I guess. Yeah, it's something that we do have to highlight. If, if anybody was watching the Unicorns of Love versus HDK game yesterday, Unicorns hit their power spikes with the Trinity Forces, and they didn't necessarily use them. They didn't go aggressive. You look at Gambit with their Hourglasses, with the Blade of the Ruined King, they went aggressive. They looked for an opportunity to take advantage of where they are in the game. What I need to see from Gambit in this matchup is a more concise rotation game. Because when they ran their double AD comp with limited forms of engage yesterday, they weren't really able to push those side lanes. And they do have a good position. They've got a strong lead. They need to try to push it out today. Yeah, I talked to Gambit after the game, and they said, we know we could have done more in the mid game, but we just waited for those five dragons. We played it safe against all the wave 10. Oh, Febivin. The charm hits. Betsy wants blood. He's going to chase out. Spirit Dash is not going to be enough, but he gets some damage onto Febivin. Febivin's just going to use that shadow to get away. Will it secure a tower? Support is here for Gambit. It looks to be the case. Gambit needs some wave in the mid lane, though. Diamond. So they might actually end up trading turrets. Well, we'll see if this works out. Tower's going to fall. We'll catch a glimpse of the mid lane in a moment. So Gambit, they do get one. They will lose one in reply. Even trade, but Fnatic are still pushing. Won't really be able to get too much. Hurricane is completed for Pinoz. He has some wave down. Oh, Diamond, he's coming in behind him. Well, let's see what he can do. Void Rush is out. Doesn't connect Look at with the well. knockup. Cabochard looking for a fight. There's no teleport available. Fnatic may That's make it out. That's the flash into Sizing Maelstrom. They've stunned up two members. Yellow Star is down. We're going to see Rainover unable to be crowd controlled thanks to that Ragnarok. But the flash charm. Betsy hits it on the millisecond. Double kill for Pinoy. Gambit are playing flawlessly. That was a beautiful flash charm from Betsy. Everything here from Gambit was, was great. They take the bottom lane to it, knowing they had ulti from Diamond to come up to the mid lane here. Chase for the kills, and yeah, Kabashat moving ahead of Huni down to join the fight, flashing in, and so many nice plays. Betsy as well. This Baron, however, is a bit risky. They're going for Huni instead. Edward got lobbed in, as is his fate. Huni dropped once more. Rend is up, will be available in a second. Pinoy looking for the stacks. Deathmark goes out. They trade one for one as Febivin is going to continue running. That ends up being a two for one Come trade shot. in this particular fight. And Febivin's doing work. Diamond digs a hole under oh, the Raptors. Lantern. And Lantern from Yellowstar. The fight was so extended. Yellowstar could respawn, but the Baron didn't fall. Baron's still alive. You're only 20 minutes in. There's been a lot of action in this game here. Gambit with the two kills first. Started it with just basically waiting for Fnatic to walk in to try and stop them to take another fight. But look here, notice how Kabo shot again. He's one step ahead of Huni, gonna join in first. He has flash ready. That's a, such a nice setup. Yellowstar will go down early, and we can see the rest of Gambit just follow up. Betsy as well. Wait for this ulti to run out from Reno and then flash charm. There we go. Flash charm into him. Oh, another kill. That was just gorgeous. A really, really decisive play from Gambit. I do think we also need to give some praise to Fnatic. Yes, they gave up more kills, but they prevented that Baron going down. That could have been the wave pushing nail in the coffin if Gambit could secure it. Fnatic, they did prevent it. We've really seen this uh, cannon pick here pay off for, for Kappa Shot. Because he's always been able to be one step ahead of Huni. So he's actually been there for the fights itself by Huni. Hasn't really had too much of an impact. He's been shot down in the laning phase quite a bit. Right is glory for him. So again, he's going to add in some more utility for his team, but it's going to make him weaker instead of going for that Rod of Ages. And the lack of magic damage can still be a problem for them. And obviously also for Pinoy now, QSS third item, going to eliminate the ulti from Zed, going to make it really, really tough for Fnatic to ever get to him when he also has a black shield for himself. A BT might come in later, so he has the shield and the 
extra lifesteal as well for him. So it's going to be very, very tough to shut down Pinoy. We're about to see Pinoy in action. Just pulling Eddie the again. Hurricane, chilling smite comes out. There's Eddie. He's going to lob Eddie. Eddie what? unable to knock up Rain over because of the Ragnarok. Oh, right. And we does <laughs> escape. We did see a teleport from Cabochon. Fnatic are split up. I got your back here to fish you. Don't worry. <laughs> Look very weird because he's like... It hit, but it, it didn't hit, knock and then he got knocked. <laughs> it kind of knocked Eddie back instead. Let's see what happens. Fnatic have grouped up in the top lane, despite the fact that Gambit started the fight. It looks like Gambit are going to be happy to trade what appears to be the dragon for a tower, but they want the fight. Death sentence connects on Eddie. Yellow Star's gone in, but he's left the rest of his team. Steelback's caught out, and Cabochon has soloed in a one v two. Yellow Star gets dropped by the rest of Gambit's support, and now Huni is in full retreat. Jump he's going to flash over the wall. Pinoy fails the pierce, not able to follow it up. But Gambit did get the dragon at the cost of a tower, and they did secure two kills. It may not be over yet, Deficio. Hold that thought. Prey Seeker goes out. Diamond is, is coming as well. Looking for Febivin. Ragnarok goes out, but the damage from Betsy is large. He does not have Spirit Rush, but he does have Exhaust. The knockup lands on Febivin. Febivin goes in with the Death Mark. Hourglass early from Cabochon will dodge the damage. Febivin is down. Huni is down. Gambit 16 to 5. They are looking to go 5 0. And, oh. and Fnatic is normally, normally the team who plays so well together. Five versus five, but Gambit in this game here, just always one step ahead to take the right fights, to catch them out of position again and again and again. Whenever Fnatic tries to push a tower, Gambit comes in from the side, gets a kill, gets a dragon, three dragons for zero as well for them. Yellow side is the only guy who's trying to stop it. Now still by joining. Oh, got oh, pulled him again. in. Pinoy saves Eddie. Pinoy's going ham. Rend is available. Baron. He's going to put some damage down, but yes, Baron not secured. Keep a close eye on those player cams. We saw. Febivin's face a moment ago, he is not looking like a happy camper. While we've got a moment to breathe, well, we don't have a moment to breathe. There's the replay. So again, yeah, Gambit is fine trading Dragon for Tower because they already have two to zero, so they're going to, towards that fifth Dragon point now. And notice after the fight, top lane, look at your minimap. Cover shot already running down to join in, so Fnatic, no, okay. We're not going to be able to run away here. Febivin, he's going to die for sure, so they go for the fight instead. And that is, ends up really backfiring for them. Now, beautiful stun by Diamond. Febivin goes down after Pop the Zoldi, first Hourglass, and Yellow Star's gonna die as well. Well, that was easy peasy. Put an Empire's Gambit, get a kill. Um, Betsy, in his second game on the LCS stage, going 6-0-6. Six, six. Keep in mind, he didn't get a blue buff. Keep in mind how much pressure Febivin put on him. And he's really stepping up. We did see Gambit look to secure that red buff, which they did. Fnatic have not got wave clear in this middle lane. Gambit are taking their fourth tower. Zero opposition. Gambit is really playing well with this skirmish, like, pick comp kind of team. Like, it's a bit of everything for Gambit in this case, except for, like, a real tank. But they're playing so well around it because they keep creating these picks onto Fnatic and punish Fnatic for overextending in any any lane. And then they transition that into towers and dragons. Again, three dragons to zero, 26 minutes in. That's scary because suddenly Fnatic now have the ticking time bomb where they're forced to fight. And at this point, in a straight up five on five, your Maokai is not tanky enough to do anything. You're all off as well. Yes, you might be able to single out one target, but that's going to be it. Febivin doesn't have a target. QSS on Pinoy, double hourglass as well for the two AP carries. Who is he going to kill? Nobody at this stage, the Fisher, because Gambit have just got... They put together a team comp that they're playing off. Febivin, you're dead. Lantern is up. He's got away, but is taken out between Eddie and Rend. They get themselves their 18th kill. I do have to highlight the fact that Huni has been absolutely nullified. He did not get his hands on Lissandra. He did not get his hands on Rumble. Both banned away. And when you think of him playing any other champions, the Gnar played it once, uninspiring. Now he's playing Maokai. Huni on tanks, not necessarily the greatest of performances. I do have to say in this game, Gambit has done a great job actually shutting him down as well. And that's one of the reasons he's not really been able to get going on the Maokai. But yeah, you are right. He's been looking a lot better on these AP carries instead for him. But Gambit is overall just... They do such a good job yeah. playing around Kapusha and his strong laning phase. Really make sure he can always get... Once to swap back to the to the real lanes. Because remember, the lane swap itself, Huni was running with Rainover to take the buffs away. He took the first blue buff from Diamond, then he took the own blue buff for Fnatic themselves. Meanwhile, Kapusha was just sitting in the lane. One versus two farming. Yeah. Nothing was stopping him, and that's it's again why he got such a massive lead. It's true, it, even if Huni was playing a different champion, 
the way Gambit reacted to the lane swap and the way they took advantage of Fnatic's over-aggression on the three buff, almost four buff, it was Gambit then pulled themselves up. Take a look at your mini-map. There are deep wards and tunnels slowly being cleared out by Fnatic, but it's Gambit that have had the vision in the jungle and those Sentinels giving more. Rainover just dodges a bullet. And this is a thing Gambit didn't do yesterday. Start baiting that Baron as soon as you know you're stronger and you can establish that vision control. You go towards that Baron and take control of the area, so you force Fnatic to come and face check you. Yesterday, it took a long time for them to do it. Now, big change, double Oracle Lens coming in for them as well to really deny vision around it. And we just see the move always back in towards. They want to make sure the Fnatic can never fully leave this area because then suddenly the Baron will go down. Remember the rent stacks from Akalista. The decisive play from Gambit. It, it is day and night. Yesterday, it was Cabochon and Diamond that got them through that laning phase and set Gambit up with a double AD comp in just, you know, fantastic fashion. But today, Gambit are pushing the map. They've got absolute dragon control. Another one spawning in 40 seconds. Their vision has been great, and they've not been caught out of position. And Gambit is making sure they're punishing Fnatic's movements. Exactly. Gambit has outplayed Fnatic in terms of teamwork, which normally never happens. Fnatic beat SK through the teamwork yesterday. And now Gambit really showing, well, we can do it as well. We can run as a unit. We can create these picks here. We can take full advantage of you if you ever split up on the map, like they've done with this very, very mobile and very damage-heavy comp. If you get caught out, you will die very fast, and we've seen it time and time again. Let's see if Fnatic decide to pick a fight on Dragon number four. They've got a lot of armor. Two frozen They want to trade for Baron. Righteous Glory. You've got some damage between Febivan and Steel back, but they have targets to go through. Let's see if they get the trade. Diamond should go straight to the Baron itself. He should never have joined for this dragon here. Kalista can take it on her own. She has life deal already. She has to rend. So just let Pinoy solve this dragon, and then you make sure you can stop Fnatic from starting at this. What the Gambit is doing, Fnatic had to back away. Four dragons to zero now. 36 minutes in, and we're going to have that fifth dragon for Gambit. Gambit have got positioning on the inhibitor turret. Fnatic want to knock on their door and when go got the, base the gate. gate. So we'll be able to respond quickly enough. We've got some wave clear, but Huni, he's decided to engage. This is one of those terrible flanking guerrilla warfare moments we saw from JWoww yesterday. Huni. Oh, Huni. Oh, Huni. Nothing. Uh, his best game for sure. Now some opens up for Gambit to actually go for this tower. They don't have any minions. Look at the side lanes. They're very far away, especially the bottom lane. It's not going to push for Gambit at all. So they have to align these six minions and the brave cannon coming in. Well, let's see what Gambit can do. They've caught Reyna, but he's Reyna already Dolphy. thrown down to Ragnarok. That's an aggressive dive. Cabochot forced to use that hourglass. Betsy gets one on the board as Cabochot is taken down in reply. Now, steal back. What can he do to wave clear? The answer is nothing because Gambit have taken the turret, they've taken the inhibitor. They will be ecstatic with that trade. Super minions barreling down Hooney the middle again. lane. Now Hooney. Oh, you're on the wrong side of town, buddy. We do see Fate's Call throwing, knocking him up in the air. Hooney is going to get dropped again. Put some CC down, but that was a poor call. And you can see big sigh from Hooney in your player camp really not on the same page as the rest of the team. No, exactly. Two times in a row now where he tries to flank, and it's pretty obvious the team is not in a position to really fight with him. Again, Fnatic, though, knowing again with his four dragons, being so far behind in gold, you're going to have to pull out some desperation plays. Baron is one of them, but Diamond stayed. And we'll make sure they can start it and rush it. So now, again, it's all about Gambit. They can wait for next dragon to spawn if they want to. They already have the inhibitor down. Then go for a push. They can take the Baron first, even bait it, force Fnatic to come in again, face check them, move them out of their own base itself. There's so many options for Gambit here. Well, Gambit are set poised to take their fifth win in a row against Fnatic, the number two team in the league. And if you step back and you look at the big picture, what this game reminds me of is watching H2K last week. H2K led into the week they had some scrappy wins. They had some, you know, games that, that went long and they had to dig deep. Gambit have been in a similar position throughout their wins, and this game is now just great decision-making. Objective after objective. Vision into jungle invade, into lane invade. We're 32 minutes on the clock, and Gambit have got super minions and near near perfect map control. It is, it is just great to see the growth of the league. It's almost been like an old M5 game, honestly, where you get all the dragons on the side of Gambit, and you keep 
always looking at where the enemy is, and if you see them, okay, they're on the top side, we're gonna invade your jungle instead, ward it up completely, and again, look for these picks here, constantly punish the enemy team for being out of position for Gambit. I like the style for them. Really suits them well. Yeah, I Keep agree. creating these picks and going for Huni. It's not the first time. No, it's not. The Lantern's there this time around. Soul Shackle's unable to root the tree in place. Gambit have got a little bit of pressure in the jungle. They steal themselves a buff. The one thing that we do need to note for Fnatic, they're looking... They might get caught out of position here. This is, this is so scary. Oh, Rain over here's the Lantern. Okay, so yellow. Only problem for Gambit here is they don't have any pink walls around this Baron itself, so they can't really deny too much vision, but instead they can just teleport in. They don't need vision when they can just engage. They've TP'd onto Fnatic. Eddie's gonna be taken out by Febervin, but is it enough? Febervin in full retreat, as is Rain over. Keep your eyes on Pinoy. He's chasing, he's dashing, he's hopping. Ren is available, he's taken out. You steal back and Yellow Star dropped. I'm at a loss for words, Deficio. Gambit. Get three for two. Little bit messy to clean up. If Diamond can the stop base. the recalls here, then Gambit can finish the game. He's looking for Fibberman. He's standing there recalling. He won't get to stop him, but he's delayed them long enough. There should be at least one inhibitor turret. So, next turret, turret is down. Pinoy is going to lifesteal up off the minions before he backs away. Again, that fight didn't exactly go the right way. Fnatic got a lot of damage down quickly. And this Gambit weren't necessarily as clumped. He did end up coming off a little worse for it, but a turret means Gambit's still in the lead. 11,000 gold in the lead. All right, Teleport coming in, cover shot. He can't really find a target for himself because he gets locked down by Huni. And then you actually see Forbidden jumping Eddie, get the first kill, and there's a lot of damage now. This is a good fight for Fnatic, except for the fact that Pinoy he didn't get dropped. Nobody can get to him and kill him. And now, on this Callista, when he can just keep auto attacking with this much attack speed, get the rinse off here, get the reset on it as well, he could clean up the fight. Dragon, one minute is going to be the target for Gambit. Just get a few pink wards now, set everything up around it. You don't care if Fnatic goes for Baron, let them have it. You take this fifth Dragon, then you just push down the base, that's enough for you. And the way Gambit have played with their very, very aggressive engages, if they get that fifth Dragon and double the stats, 12% AD and AP at this point, that's that's the makings of a guaranteed team fight win. Diamond playing so aggressively with just the support of Edward, Bullying Fnatic through their jungle. 30 seconds until Dragon spawns. You can feel the tension as Fnatic are grouped up and looking for a fight. Charm connects. Heavens to Betsy, that damage that is huge. 2,000 hit points just shredded away there or thereabouts from Huni. This is going to make it nearly impossible for Fnatic to do anything. If you can't even send in Huni to buy time for your carries to do anything in a fight, well, then you might as well just back away and not risk being aced at this dragon and end up losing the game. No teleport for Huni either, so he can't back off and... He got to heal a little bit fight. on the minions, though. He got to heal a little bit. Let's see what he can do. Still around 50% of his HP available. There is vision in the pit for Fnatic. Going in. Righteous Glory's been activated. Huni's looking for a target, but Gambit have peeled back, have peeled away. Have managed to peel Fnatic apart. Rain over, no Ragnarok yet. He does decide to go in. Let's look for Pinoy. Dark Binding connects on Febervin. Edward, what have you done to save this fight? We do see him Gambit in retreat, slicing Maelstrom to zone up as best they can. Pinoy is running rampage through the side lanes. We do see Febervin trying to get out, but he goes down. Deathmark does secure one. Triple kill for Cabochard. Dragon number five for Gambit. De uh, Deficio, this is game. This should be game at least. They're going actually for the Baron itself. Diamond even had a tunnel over there. Can start it, they have to the bear him buff. Might even oh! get a kill on Yellow Star. Has he got Yellow Star? It's gonna oh, take the tunnel. The, the flay comes out. Diamondback is back. Diamondback? Diamondback is back. See, I forgot a word. Diamond is back. End of story. Gambit, dragon number five, Baron number one. And a just dominating victory. His team fights have become a little scary for Gambit, but it doesn't matter. As you notice how Gambit is to see the Righteous Lord being popped, they just back away. They kite around here, try and land a little bit of poke, see if they can get the dragon low enough to use the rent from Callista. Here's a little problem for Capuchot. He gets CC'd, so he doesn't get to use his ulti before the hour last. So he's actually lacking a lot of damage for him. But Pinoy again, notice his HP. He's barely getting hit, so he can just jump around. Feverman can't even go for him due to the QSS, and therefore Gambit can still clean up the fights. Poor little Cabochon has to die in the end, though. I absolutely love the fact that Eddie managed to land that Dark Binding on Febervin right at the beginning. The amount of time that it bought Gambit just allowed them to chase. We do see movement speed. That's a very quick 
Gambit squad. They've got empowered minions, they've got empowered champions. They've got another inhibitor down. Look at the minion waves. It is pushing against them in two lanes, but Gambit, they don't give a monkeys because they're grouping on the Nexus turret. They're going to put some damage down. Hooney's trying to catch out. Teleport was used, and Eddie predicts it. Look at Febivin. He's low. He's already forced back. He's forced out of the fight. Well, they can go back, get your home guards. Fnatic just needs to go get home guards here. Take a bit of damage, try and reset as soon as they actually can get full HP and then go back into the fight. They have to win this here, otherwise Gambit Gaming are going to look so good in. I don't think zero. they can. Cabochard's gone in. This is the fight that wins Gambit, their fifth game in a row. The Nexus turret is falling. The Nexus is down. Gambit is back. We heard Diamond say in the feature beforehand, it's time for Gambit to get on a real long lose, oh, losing, <laughs> winning streak. <laughs> Obviously not a losing streak, a winning streak for Gambit. Way to ruin the moment. Deficio, I am stunned. Five wins in a row now. I am Gambit stunned. is on a fantastic winning streak, and every game they play, they just look better and better. Uh, it's, it's more than that. This is the best game Gambit has played in 2015. Yeah, for sure. There is, there is no doubt about it. For anybody that was doubting their ability, which includes me, if this is what Gambit can reach, if this, if this is what Gambit can do, we need to see this more often. It was just fantastic to see how they always knew what to do whenever Fnatic tried to make a play. Gambit would always say, okay, either we're gonna go five minutes and kill you, or we can just send three guys to stop you from pushing, and then the other two can take a dragon. Again, they got every single dragon in this game, five to zero. Not a problem for them at all. They were just always, again, a step ahead of Fnatic and outplayed them in terms of team work, which is so weird. And Hoonies, luckily, still smiling a little bit. Yeah, this mixed mixed reactions from the Fnatic camp when we fought them on camera. When you've been thoroughly beaten like this, I guess the best thing to do is step back and just realize where it went wrong. Yeah, because for sure. from the very early game, Fnatic had a clear strategy in the jungle, but Gambit just replied and their team fights were just they were borderline rude because they just kept jumping on Fnatic. Over and over. That was a very exciting game to watch. 33 kills to nine. Before I give this back to Deficio, Betsy, heavens Betsy, 10-0-13. His team had 33 kills. He was involved in 23. No deaths. He did on Ari. I hate to say this, 